You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI Show where we look at all of the speech updates that happened at Build. You can build a ton of cool things and we even have a device that people can talk to. Welcome to this episode of the AI Show where we're going to talk all about the speech SDK and what's new since Build. I got my friend Rob. Why don't you introduce yourself, my friend? You bet. I'm Rob Chambers. I'm an architect on the speech team in the AI division. And uh, I'm excited to show everything new here about the speech systems that we've got going. Awesome. So for those that don't know about the speech SDK with Cognitive Services, why don't you do just like a little elevator pitch on what is it and why you should use it? Oh, sure. So the Cognitive Services speech SDK is a, a client library that allows developers to put speech features into their applications, either interactive applications or offline applications. Uh, it talks to the speech cognitive service. It makes it a lot easier than using REST calls because with speech, it's a little bit more complicated. Right. So we try to make it a lot simpler. We compress the audio, we stream the audio. We make it a lot easier for you and the client. So it's effectively working with real wave files of people saying stuff. That's right. That's amazing, that's amazing. So what, what are some of the cool features that are in there, that have been in there since build, before build, and then we'll talk about some of the cool things that are happening after. So give me like two or three features that people might wanna look at. Oh sure, so uh, with the Cognitive Services Library, both the older one and the newer one, uh, you have the ability to you know, provide your subscription details, you can connect up, uh, you can do interactive recognition with a microphone object, you can feed things in from a WAV file, you can get the text back out. Uh, it works across multiple languages. Uh, and so those are true about both uh, the older SDK and the newer SDK. So what's new since build? Gotcha. Since build, what we've, what we've done is we looked at all of the different APIs we have for speech across different platforms. So we've got speech platforms in Windows that are baked in. We've got the cognitive services libraries. We've got uh, older things that are in Windows, other things that have been online for a while. We're making the first step in a journey that's going to take us a little while to consolidate all of those capabilities into one API I see. to rule them all. Right, the one speech of power. That's SDK. right. Awesome. <laughs> nice. Finally. Yeah, that's cool. So they won't be. They won't. They won't have to go to a number of different places. It'll be that's just right. the same thing. That's right. So and the quality will be the same. That's right. So there's one SDK, and then additionally, we're focusing on not just one platform. We're focusing on all the platforms. So you should be able to use this on Windows. You should use it on Linux, on iOS, on Android. Uh, different device types like that. You should also be able to use it from any programming language that you want. So oh, nice. C Sharp, C++, C even, mm -hmm. Java, you know, all of the different modern programming languages on all of the modern platforms. Fantastic. Well, what do you have to show us today? I, I, I heard you brought some cool demos. I do. I've got a couple things going. So first, I'm going to show you the, the software itself, uh, the SDK, and how that works. And that's consistent across both if you're doing development for uh, you know, a traditional desktop device or a mobile device. But then I've also got this uh, piece of hardware here that we're calling the Device Development Kit. Cool. And so, as you know, at Build, we talked about how developers can take this reference hardware and actually build their own devices, if you will. Uh, to put out in market. So if you think of like the Harman Kardon speaker that's got Cortana on it, um, you could build something like that yourself, but for your own agent or for your own speech capabilities. That's so cool. I'm going to show both of those for the software and the hardware. Let's do it. All right. So um, with speech, there's a, there are some major pivots in the kinds of applications people build. So one kind is an interactive sort of application. There's a user there right now. Another is it might be offline. So most of the demo here is going to be focused more on that interactive use cool. case. And so in that, oftentimes developers will start out like, what, what do I need to do? So I'm going to show the demo here in code in C++. Let's do it. Um, and what I'm going to show is a few different things. I got a simple console mode application. We're going to show six different sort of scenarios. We're going to see how easy it is to use. This same code I've got compiled running on Windows. I've also got compiled running on this Android based uh, device development kit. Awesome. So you download the SDK, you get that package. Uh, we have a bunch of strongly typed objects and namespaces. So there are the namespaces. You provide your subscription key information, and then uh, we're going to jump right in. So let's actually do the demo first, then we'll show the code. I love it. So, demo. First one, do speech. Hello, I hope all of you are watching this and enjoying this at home today. Now, interestingly, it took quite a while. It got it a little bit wrong, but it also took a while for it to recognize. So, uh, one of the things we tell developers is, don't let the user be hanging there. Like, you know, show them actually what's happening along the way. You, you can see that in the Cortana experience right. and other experiences where the words show up over time. Sure. So, we call those inter intermediate uh, results. So, let's show what that looks like, and then we'll jump in and look at the code. 
Now when I'm talking, it should actually show you the words while I'm talking, and the user then has a much higher confidence that it's actually working correctly. Like, I know how this works, and it's kind of creepy, but it's also super cool, right? <laughs> because uh, I can imagine a scenario where, where people might not be able to type, or there's uh, interactions that you want people to have with whatever device you have, where you can right. literally just talk to it and it can understand it. That's right, that's right. And so there are different levels of that understanding. So first is you might just want to get the text, and so that's what this shows you. You may also want to have use other of the cognitive services like the Language Understanding Intelligence Service, or mm -hmm. LEWIS, to figure out what the user really meant. Right. So we're going to see that in just a minute, but let's, let's look at the code behind this let's one do it. to see what this actually, uh, how this works. So we've made it very, very simple. We've tried to make it both idiomatically correct for the languages, so I'll show you C++, but I'll talk about the others. So it's just a couple lines of code. So you start out with this speech factory object, and you supply your subscription information uh, that you get off of the Cognitive Services mm -hmm. site. Then you're going to create a recognizer. And so these are strongly typed objects. So I created a speech recognizer, which is optimized for speech recognition. But what you were talking about is an intent recognizer. So I could have created one of those. But the first demo doesn't show intent. It's just this. We have different kinds, and so we'll expose those. Cool. Then um, there are two kinds of interaction modes. One, like Cortana uses, is a push-to-talk model. You press a button, and it listens for you for one thing, and then it stops listening to you. So we call that single shot. So this demo shows you that single shot. So you call this recognize async, returns a, a standard C++ future. Then you can wait for it or not. Uh, and then you can get the result from that. So the result object also strongly typed. It's got text on it. It's got a couple of the properties, and you just print it out. The intermediate results one, though, is a little bit more. It's still the same code. We've designed this SDK to be the same code, and you just add little bits at a time. So got what it. you learn at the beginning, you can reuse in all of the scenarios going forward. So this all the same code. The only difference is I've hooked up an uh, intermediate result uh, event handler. This is modeled a little bit, at, a little bit similar to a, a boost signal or a C sharp event, sort of, but, mm -hmm. but optimized for the C use case. In C sharp, it's actually you know a .NET event, cool. uh, etc. So you hook it up, and we're going to print it out. The rest of the code is the same, so we didn't have to care about that. So now the next thing though is there's another kind of interaction model, which is the you know, I want to push a button, and then it's just going to listen to me for a long time. That was only one operation, so let's do this one. Let's do number three. Now what's going to happen is it's going to listen to me, and then it's going to listen to everything I say. And in fact, I can just keep talking over time, and it'll get everything that I say. And I don't have to do anything else uh, at all. So what's that look like in the code? So in the code, hopefully it's all the same. It's pretty similar. We just change a little tiny bit here in this do, uh, do speech continuous. Uh, same code here, same code there. We've also hooked up a final result handler because in the first example, we gave you the result when you made this function call. But for this one, you're going to do something called start continuous recognition. So we can't give you all of the results as a return value. So we just it get started, and then we event each one of the results to you one by one, just like we event the intermediate results. That's cool. Yep. So is this, is this pushing data up to cognitive services and it coming is. back to the cloud? It's really That's fast. Right. Yeah, it is very, very fast. Um, so we've optimized it. We're doing the right kinds of compression and the right kinds of optimizations of the network. We've done a bunch of analysis about what packet sizes to use and things like that. Whereas if we were just letting you use our WebSocket API or, or other things, you have to figure all those things right. out yourself. Where here it's just you know, three lines of code, and all of a sudden I've got all the text. That's really nice. Yeah. So. You, you mentioned you know, what the user meant, and so let's, let's look at an intent example. So imagine, that was recording me the entire time. And, okay. it, and it, it was doing it, but it wasn't bogging anything else down, which is really cool. No, it's really, really good. Uh, on the local machine, it's just taking less than 1% of the processor to do all this, because we're just recording audio and sending it up. Cool. So the intent example, imagine I went off to the language understanding service, and I set up a new application up mm -hmm. there. You've done that before, Absolutely. I'm sure. And so you get to add different intents. And so the user wanted to do this, or the user wanted to do this. You type in different examples. So that way, when you submit text to the Lewis service, it will actually be better able to figure out what you meant. We've done some great work with the language understanding service team, where we, we are actually doing this in, in one service call. So we send all the audio up to the service. We let the service know which Lewis model we're going to use. It optimizes speech recognition using all of the data that you've provided. We do the speech recognition. Then we call off service to service for, for the understanding. And then we return that back to the client. 
all in real time. And that's cool because that saves the, because usually what you would do is you would say something, get the text back, and right. then you take the text and you send, send it, it to Lewis. You send it off to the next service, but you come back. You're, you're already here at our network, we might as well just. Why not, yeah, right? absolutely. It makes the application more reliable, it makes it more performant, and uh, it's just a lot easier to program as well. Cool, I love it. So let's see what that looks like, and then we'll look at the code. So we're gonna do number four. Now, what if I said something that my model doesn't do? It still looks like everything I've done so far, but it's sort of guessing at what I meant to do. But those confidence values are really low. Well, that one was less low. But let's try another one. Change the channel to channel 9. I want to watch TV tonight. Show me the NBC channel. Or show me the TV guide. That's really cool. All right, so not only do we get the speech right, or even when we get the speech wrong, what you saw in those examples were we, we sent it off to Lewis and Lewis figured it out. It doesn't need to know every precise word to be correct. It just needs to know more or less what it is you're talking about. They pull out the intent, oh. they pull out the entities. We can return that back to you. So you're even, you're even optimizing the amount of words that you're sending to Lewis in order to get the actual intent, or you're just giving it what it needs? We're giving it what we heard based mm -hmm. on what the user has typed in to sort of prepare the, the Lewis model. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then Lewis does this fantastic job using great AI techniques sure. to sort of figure it out. Cool. So what's that code look like? Well, hopefully it looks a lot like the other code, and it does. And so still same factory, but now we're creating an intent recognizer instead of the speech recognizer. And so we have some different methods available for you on this. But all the methods you've already learned about still all work, and the event handlers still look the same. They have better different types. So here you can see that I've got an intent recognition event args instead of a speech recognition event args. And the result that's there has this thing called an intent ID. Uh, and that's going to be the, the intent right. ID that you specified here locally in your app or the, the intent name that was from the Lewis model. And then before that, though, I have to actually tell the system what is it I'm trying to do, which Lewis model or application am I using. So in this example, um, I'm just taking the endpoint that's up there that I go to the portal and I see, and I just make this one line of code. So I create this language understanding model reference locally. And then on that strongly typed recognizer object, I add an intent with that TV channel or with the watch TV or show, show guide. That lets our back end know what you're probably going to say. So applications that uh, have only three or four things they're doing out of all of the intents, if we know in speech recognition, we can make speech recognition even better because we know you're only going to deal with these three or four kinds of oh, things. Oh, that's cool. Right? And so, but if you were at the root of an application like Cortana, we call that turn zero, you might, uh, you might say anything. And so if that was the case, you know, you could actually say, in fact, use everything out of the model, not just a few of them. And we'll, we'll use all of the data that you provided in that model cool. to help you disambiguate. And the rest of it's the same. There's a recognize async, there's a start continuous, et cetera. Pretty cool so far. Yeah, nice, nice. All right, so we got uh, another a couple demos that are even better. So, um, so you know, in, in these, I hate, keep having to press buttons. Like, what's with this button stuff? And right. like, this is like 2018. I should just be able to talk to the system, That's right? right. Right? So, well, we got this thing called keyword spotting. So we've taken the technologies that we've used to build Cortana, and we're making those available to developers now. And so you saw that at Build that we announced that. We've got a web, uh, website that you can, when we're using this device, uh, device kit I'll talk about in a minute, you can go to and you can build your own keyword spotting model, download it to where your application is going to run, and then hook it up to our Cognitive Services SDK, and you can use your own keywords. And so, that's cool because you're not sending that particular keyword spotter up to the cloud. Right, it's we're doing locally everything locally. Edge. That's right. So in fact, uh, let me show you what that looks like. So in the past when I was talking, you saw it just kept, kept listening. So when I run this one, and now we keep talking, like nothing's going to the cloud right now. It's just hanging out, waiting for me. You know, nothing's happening. I can stand way over here, you know, but I can say, hey, Cortana, what's on channel nine? And it comes back and it says, uh, you know, it sent it up to Lewis. I haven't trained this model specifically very well, mm -hmm. but you can see that we get the Lewis response back. It's still not listening to me, but if I want to say something else like, hey, Cortana, send an email to Jeff. See, it recognized some things incorrectly, but it still knows that I want to send email to Jeff. That's cool. Right? So how does that code look? Well, um, very, very similar, in fact. So we have these three different modes of operation. You can do recognize async, that's the single shot. You can do continuous, when you say start continuous recognition. And then we've just got one more method called 
start keyword recognition. That's it. That's all you got to do, right? Well, okay, there's one more line of code above that. Uh, you actually have to tell us, you know, where your model file is. And then you put that in your application, we load it, we do everything else for you. There's nothing different about any of the other apps. And that's just something you build on the website, you download, and it's locally on your box. And it's locally on your box, cool. and then there you go. Right. I love it. So um, what we see is what we're trying to provide is that developers can do the elemental operations. Mm -hmm. You can do speech to text. You can do a little bit more advanced things like, well, command and control or intent recognition. You can do even bigger things like more like what you might do with an agent. Uh, right. with this keyword spotting kind of capability. And again, remember, this works on all plat this will work on all platforms. We got it on uh, at Build We Announced, we got it on Windows, we got it on Linux, we've got it on Android, which is what's running on this device we're going to show you next. Okay, cool. All right, so with that, uh, let me switch over to a different window. Here I'm running the, uh, the Android uh, ADB shell. So I've already connected to the device. Um, I've put the application running over there, exact same source code, just recompiled because it's just standard C++. Sure. And uh, it's the same thing. So let's just go ahead and run it and see. Right? Looks the same, right? Let's do continuous recognition. Now I'm using the device that's over here. So let's do just one turn. This is a test using the device. Okay? So we get that, and then it stops. If we want to do keyword recognition, that also works. So I can come way over here. In fact, I could go way over there, but then I wouldn't be on camera. But I can say, hey, Cortana, what time is it? Oh, it rejected it. Uh oh. Hey, Cortana, what time is it? Well, I must have done something wrong when I copied it over to the device. Let's try that one more time. Hey, Cortana, what time is it? There you go. There we go. Right? And so both things work on either of the devices, so either on Windows or over there. In fact, we do a bunch of things with uh, noise cancellation, uh, side talks, uh, human uh, side talk suppression. And so no matter what's going on, if you were talking while I was talking, but I said, hey, Cortana, to it, it would actually listen to me and not you. Oh, because there's a mic array on there? There's a mic array, right? There's seven elements there, and so we do directional beamforming. Uh, so we know exactly where you are. I could also be playing music right here, and we'll subtract out all the music uh, that we hear. And so again, because I'm at a different angle, it knows where I am, so it's going to listen to just me. And so, like, if I want to build something like this, is there like how do I how do I even begin to do that? Gotcha, gotcha. So uh, like like in the presentations we build, um, the SDK is available on Cognitive Services uh, websites. We've Which got all is the multi-platform, multi-platform, okay. right? And so you can do uh, all of the things with the exception of keyword spotting on all of those platforms. We're going to have it on all of the platforms, but at, uh, at build, all we've announced is we've put it on this device for Android. We've optimized it for that because of the array microphone. Cool. And so that's all there. There's one more thing, though, that I didn't show. All right, let's see it. Um, let's, let's look at the code for translation because we uh, sometimes, you know, I'm a developer. I only speak one language and kind of like a third of another language, sure. barely. And what I would love to do is be able to write an application in one language, but then it works in other languages. That'd be awesome, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it would. We, we don't have that yet. No. But, but we're working toward it with the same API. So we've integrated translation into the same system. Uh, where I can speak and it'll give me translation. So let's look, that's the first step in the progress. So let's see what that looks like. So for machine translation, we have these uh, strongly typed objects that we were talking about before. I can create a different kind, which is called a translation recognizer. And here I can tell you that I have an English, um, the user's going to be talking in English, but I actually want you to translate it to these three different languages. And then we're going to show it to you when it's translated. Now, unfortunately, I, d I can't show you this right now because mm -hmm. we're, uh, we're doing a service release. Sure. Um, but the, what you'd see is it would just print each one of those out. We also have this uh, doing speech-to-speech -speech translation. So the, the actual translator app from Microsoft uses this same capability, which is what we're trying to do with this SDK. We're trying to do this first party equal third party. If we're doing it, we want everybody else to be able to do it. And we're actually going to use the same APIs. Uh, That's craziness because like, I, I remember watching the old space Star Trek stuff and they had the universal translator and I'm just like, that's ridiculous. Who, said, who can build something like that? It looks like we have the beginnings of that now. We have the beginnings of that. In fact, the translation accuracy is crazy good. And so it, uh, after build, uh, or before the next build, uh, I should say, we are going to have in place so that I can actually tell the system, you know, I want to do this intent recognition thing, but the user's going to talk in English and uh, I want you to, you know, translate that into German because I'm a German speaker. That's amazing. Well, 
Yeah, you, you've sort of wet my palate here. There's a lot of cool things that I want to try. One of the things we do at Channel 9 is we have to, we got to caption everything we do. Yeah. Imagine building a system using this that Absolutely. automatically captions everything I'm saying immediately directly on the machine. That I'm excited to cool. build that with you, my friend. Thank you. Well, thanks so much for spending some time with us. You're welcome. Thanks so much for watching. We've been looking at all of the speech updates since build. Make sure you download and take a look at the SDK and then maybe even take a look at the DDK, see if you want to build something. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for being with us, Rob. We'll see you next so. time. Take Bye. care.